Hello and welcome to the BYU Family History Library webinar series. My name is Joe Everett and I am the family and local historian, uh, family and local history li librarian for Brigham Young University and the producer of this webinar series. I'm stepping in for my production assistant, Anna, uh, to host this week as she's not feeling well. We we'll hope that she'll be feeling better soon. Before I introduce our speaker, I have just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box and I can address your concerns. Um, the chat is also where you can put your comments, questions, and insights. Um, Katie will tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, you can find our schedule of upcoming webinars uh, as well as recordings of previous webinars on our website and our YouTube channel. All of our webinars are recorded and uploaded by the following Monday um, for you to view again later. Um, and we post the links to recordings and other updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. For, to, for today's webinar, we are pleased to hear from Catherine Altop Hall, who will be giving a presentation on finding your ancestors in the updated Family Search digital library and how to benefit from free book scanning. Catherine is the Family Search Digital Library uh, and Books Processing and Publications Manager. She has enjoyed spreading the word about the value of the digital library at events such as Roots Tech, Family, Search, Family History Library Facebook Live Series, and at various library conferences such as ULA and IFLA. Prior to her current role, she provided customer reference assistance and facilitated genealogy classes as an employee of the Midwest Genealogy Center in Independence, Missouri. She currently resides in Salt Lake City with her husband and soon to be one-year-old daughter. All right, um, Katie, you're, with, you're ready, go ahead. Great, thank you so much for that introduction, Joe. And I'd just like to thank everyone who is joining us this evening. Here in Utah, it's five o'clock, it is the end of a work day. And for some of you, if you're East Coast or Midwest, it's even later in the evening. We appreciate you being here this day. I am gonna be dividing my presentation up into three different parts. The first part is going to focus on the Family Search Digital Library. We actually just went through a new UX design, wanted to highlight a little bit of the newness to the site. The second component of the presentation will be talking about uh, Roots Tech, and we know that that's coming up. And then the third component of the presentation will be talking about how BYU is participating in Roots Tech this year in a very specific way. After each one of these different parts, I will be pausing and encouraging you to put questions into the chat about what I just spoke about. And then I'll answer those questions. We'll move on to the next part. Feel free, though, at any other time to put questions in the chat. It just will be after each one of those parts. I actually address those. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera or else you're going to be so confused by my eyes looking all over the place at three different screens. And we'll get started with talking about the new Family Search Digital Library design. Let me give you a little bit of background about Family Search Digital Library. What is this? So the Family Search Digital Library is an online collection, has over half a million family history, maps, yearbooks, city directories, biographies, and genealogy books. Why do I have genealogy books separated out? Well, there's a lot of things that fall into that. Could be indexes for cemetery records. It could be an index to church records that someone's transcribed. There's so many different types of books out there that assist those who are working on their genealogy. All of these books are available free at the Family Search Digital Library, and you will see the web address there. Just so you know, at the very end of this presentation, there is a slide that contains a list of a lot of what I'm going to show you today, different websites that I'll be taking you to. And there will be a lot of live demonstrations and not just PowerPoint. So hopefully I can keep you with me. Now, how do we have over half a million books? And that number continues to grow. 
It's because we have awesome partners around not just the country, but around the world. We're up to about 25 different book scanning sites. These sites are generally in libraries. Some are in genealogical societies or family history societies, uh, local history societies, I guess is what they would, are referred to. And those are predominantly our partners. We send volunteers there. They are able to go through the collection, select books that fall into public domain. They do the scanning of the books. The images that are received after the scanning, that's what my team then works on. They do OCR processing and get the images online. A little overview on the project itself and how we got such an awesome online collection. Some advantages of the digital library. You have access anytime. During COVID, you had libraries shut down, but we were still able to provide content digitally by accessing it through the site. OCR. Many of you are probably familiar with that abbreviation. It stands for optical character recognition. What it is, is it is software that allows a computer to identify characters in a book. And so when you go in to do a, a search on a website that contains scanned books that has this OCR software done on it, it will bring return search results uh, with the certain search terms that you have used to search. We love this site because it's preserving books and especially rare books that also gives you the opportunity to find rare books that might not be in your local genealogy library. Books provide a wealth of pictures and stories. You know that we love names, dates, and places, and that's what helps us to grow our tree. But there's something about having that personal connection with your ancestor and that's what stories and pictures can do and so we love having access to these books on the digital library where is the family search digital library you can either get to it directly by going to the url shown or you can go ahead and go to the family search website itself you go to search and when you hover over search there'll be a drop down menu You'll click on books and that will take you into the digital library. I'll be demonstrating in just a moment. But before I could do so, I'd like to point out the, the need to actually go into books itself. So the way that Family Search is set up, and this is just a little insider note, uh, the book site has been created and developed by a vendor. So we're not part of the federated search experience. So if you were to just put in a search term into Family Search itself, you're not going to be automatically taken to the digital library and these wonderful books. You have to make the effort to go to books itself to do your searching. So here's now I'm going to be kind of bouncing things in front of the PowerPoint. I'm going to bring you to, and I'm gonna start out in family search so you can see how I got to the digital library. Right now we're doing heavy advertisement for Roots Tech. At the top banner, you will see some options in the bar at the top. You're going to click on search, go down to books. That will bring you to our new site here. One of the very first things that you'll notice, not only that it looks different, but we have some different options here that we, I would like to just briefly highlight. You want to learn more about the digital library itself. And that very first icon that I clicked on, it will take you to a page that's actually housed on the Family History Library page. In this, you can get more information on book scanning, 
how it's done. If you want to see a little video of what it looks like while the book is being scanned, you want to know where our scan sites are around the world. There's a list of that there. If you want to see the type of content that we are scanning, that will be listed there. That same list of what content are we scanning and what types of donations we accept, that will be found here in the donate. There's frequently asked questions that can be helpful. There's other helpful resources and helpful resources. There's some tutorials on how to do some searches. And then this particular tile will take you to a bunch of tiles where you can see backlinks. A nice collection of our partners. You click on these tiles and these tiles bring you to videos that then highlight and describe these different library collections. I don't know what they specialize in. There's also some testimonials of people who have used the digital library either because they have donated content and they've used the site as a way to preserve their family history books or they have actually used the site to find help, information to help them in their, in their research. In this site, so we talked about library overview, submitting books, that's gonna take you directly to the same tile that we saw in the previous screen. And there's a video here that t tells you how to go about the donating content. And then this final digital library partners, and this is going to show you a list again of our partners. The way that this behaves though, if you were to click on the actual title or the library institution name, it's going to take you to all of the books found in the digital library that we would have scanned from that particular location. All right, let's go to some new features. One of the big new features here is this advanced search feature. When you're using Google, you don't go on usually and use operators. It's not like I'm saying I'm looking for sneakers and pink and running. Uh, I usually can just put pink running shoes in and then I get a result of pink running shoes. So the intent with the, the way this advanced search is set up is that you're not necessarily having to type in those different operators that you are just going to select that. We're not as fancy as Google yet. Someday we'll be as fancy as Google. Uh, but you will be able to go ahead and put in a search term and then you can select which operator you're going to, to use. The way that our metadata works, these are really the main ways to search is title, subject, author. Keyword, that's where you would put, say, a surname, or if you're looking for a yearbook, you put the school yearbook's name in the keyword search there. So I'm just going to bring up, I'm going to do schools, and I'm wanting to do schools, and I'm going to do in, I want it to be a school in Missouri. And so I'm hoping the Missouri is in the title. I'm gonna put Missouri. I'm gonna do a search. And I have a list of over 3,300 books. Now, once I got to say a book that I was interested in, um, I would be able to click on that and I can do a search for a name in there. If you wanted to start out, say you wanted to start out with a surname, I could have put that in for my keyword instead of putting in schools. The way that this software works is it's searching every single word inside of this book. And so it will bring anything that, that the computer finds with that surname in your search results. 
you can see here that on this side, you have ways that you can then adjust your searches. You can add elements, you can do a reset. If I were to add something in right now, I could do an update. It's nice to be in your search, then you can limit while you're in your search listing. Another, this is a new feature. If you were to go under creator, it also has it under owning institution, but if you click more, here's another thing to highlight. Because this is new, there's some bugs. As you use it, I am, and there is a, email address that I am including at the very end of this presentation. Email us and let us know about the bugs. When I say new, it, it went live February 2nd. It's extremely new. Uh, the idea though, yeah, it's not doing it right now. Okay, I will describe, but it should, it should be working for you when you're in. When you click the more button, at the top, there should be just an, the alphabet. And then what it would allow you to do is then click on the letter in the alphabet and it will take you then to a listing with say just the creator, or just the author that last name starts with S. It's just a way that you would be able to filter a little bit better your search results. With the new design, anywhere where you're seeing blue, that means, and it's letting you as the user know, that that's your current view or what you currently have clicked on. So right now I'm in a list view. I click on grid view. It's going to uh, display the books in a completely different way. I like this grid view. If I were wanting to potentially um, go in and I could save it as a PDF. Uh, see, you all are helping me so much. I'm already seeing errors. So for this, if I were to go in, I would want to have the PDF have every single one of these books on a page so I could save it in my research results. Right now, it's putting one on every page. I don't think that that's very helpful. We'll go take a look at that. If you agree with me, let me know. Um, here's the history book of Missouri. And I click on the book itself. I haven't signed in yet. What it's going to end up doing is when I do the view inside, it's going to prompt me and ask me to, to sign in. Once I'm signed in, there's a different look to the viewer itself. The icons are now at the top. They used to be at the bottom. How I mentioned anywhere where you see blue, it, the system is trying to tell you that's the view that you are in. So right now I'm in picture view. Now you have option to do thumbnail view. When you're in thumbnail view, when you use your mouse wheel, it will now zoom in so that you can then see that particular image. And it's nice that it will put that image into a clear focus and to then just go back to optimal zoom you just click on the icon the optical zoom optimize zoom icon if you want to know more about the book itself more metadata information that's what the eye the view information is going to share with you you also, if you let's click on one particular page, this little box that says show text, what it's doing is it's showing you everything in blue is what the soft, the OCR software took a look at. And then it, for lack of a better word, transcribed and put that over here and you'll see this in text view when you click on that text or the show text it is showing you in that format the thing that's nice about this you can highlight and then you can copy and paste that you could put it in research notes if you would like to put that in research notes another new feature 
when you click on the download, you have the option of clicking the and downloading the entire PDF or JPEG if you would like, or you can do just individual pages. And that is the same for sharing. So you can now share with social media. And if you were to copy a link, you can copy by the entire book if you want to share the whole book with an individual. Or say you're just wanting to highlight in your family tree just a page from a book, then you can copy that link and then you would be able to connect it as a source onto your family tree. There's not a fancy way of connecting the source right now. You would have to go in and create your source and include this link. Unfortunately, there's not just a magic button that automatically connects the source to your tree. Those are the highlights of what is new inside of the actual viewer and on the digital library itself. I'm gonna pause there. Any questions? Again, I'm gonna put at the very end, you'll have a email address as you use this. If you don't mind sharing some feedback with us, that would be fantastic. And there's a lot of really good things about the site. We've been hearing users that share, that they are liking the difference in the, how large the icons are, but then there's other things that we hear that are a frustration. And here's one I'll point out just when you are in thumbnail view, to scroll through, grabbing that bar on the right, the right hand side, it's very tiny. It'd be nice to have that increased. So that's something that we're, we'll make sure that we have the, the vendor implement. But other suggestions, would love to hear it. I have are a the, couple questions coming now. Um, are the books a US collection or does it include books from other countries? Okay, I'm, this is the way I'm gonna answer that question is I'm gonna do a show rather than just a tell. When, so one of the ways you can just click search, it'll show you how many books we have total in the library. And on the left-hand side of the page, one of the things that you, you'll notice is there's a language button. It shows all the different languages that we have in the Family Search Digital Library. Um, so you have Thai, there's Chinese, there's German, there's English. And so my answer to that question is we have books from all over. There's Jaku in, in this collection. There are lots of German books that you will find. Our vendor who we work with, they're actually based out of France and we have some books that have been scanned from that area. Um, and then, like I said, we're also international. So we have a, scan, a couple scan sites in Europe currently. All right, another question is, does Record Seek work uh, to attach items from the digital library as a source? I, I don't know if that does. If it's something that Family Search developed specifically for attaching records for Family Search, then probably not because we are separately created by an outside vendor. We don't have that automatic connection to Family Search trees. It's something that we'll be working towards. Okay, I think that's all the questions for Great. now. Okay, thanks. What? Yeah, so we talked about new look, we talked about questions. Okay, Roots Tech 2022. The theme this year is share your family story. It's going to be March 3rd through the 5th. I'm gonna do a little bit of highlighting of this. Get rid of them. Okay, this is what you would see online today. If you were to go to the Roots Tech homepage, you can go to familysearch.org. It's going to be on there. They're going to have you clicking into this Roots Tech homepage. Encourage you to sign up. It's free. And you can see a welcome message from Steve Rockwood. 
Relatives at Roots Tech was extremely popular last year. I invite you to be one of the many to join that and see how you might be related to others who are coming to Roots Tech. I got to talk with a cousin who I've never met before and by this connection during Roots Tech, and that was really fun. I had no idea that there was somebody uh, on a certain line of my family that was so into family history and had done so much to the point of hiring researchers over in the Ukraine. Um, definitely working together with that individual. I hope you find some of those types of relatives out there as well that are active in their putting together their family trees. So this is the current page. I can't really take you in and to see main page sessions or anything, but I can at least do a little bit of highlighting of kind of what it looked like last year. And there will be a lot of similarities this year to last year, but with some bonus updates. So this last year, they did a list of sessions. You can see all the tiles here. This year, there's going to be about a little over 900 sessions. Last year, there were several thousand. They found it to be a little overwhelming for people. You can still go back in. You can continue watching last year's as, as well. This year, again, a little over 900 classes. With those 900 classes, they are doing a main stage event. Again, these main stage events, they actually went to the people's either hometown or their homelands and film these live. So I know that there was one done in Paris, there's one in Brazil, there's a, an individual by the name of Matthew Modine, he's on Stranger Things, he lives in New York, they filmed him live doing his presentation there in New York City. And all of those will be on the Roots Tech site itself. Books is a part of Roots Tech. We end up falling into what is called the Expo Hall. This is where you would see all the vendors. If you're interested in getting any discounted DNA kits, this is the time to do it. Uh, generally, our vendors will have shops, Ancestry, My Heritage, and they'll be sending, they will be selling DNA kits at a discounted price. So we would be a part of the family search booth, the, the digital library and book scanning. There'll be an icon. Again, this is last year, so it'll look a little different this year, but there'll be an icon that looks like this that then will take you to our booth, which this is what last year's looked like. I already highlighted it. This year's will look slightly different and there'll be some different resources this year, especially with our new UX design. So if you're hoping to get a little bit more of search demos out of this particular presentation today, come to Roots Tech Expo Hall. There are a couple pre-recorded demos on doing searching in the new site itself, and that could be of use to you. Okay. Any other, or do you have any questions about Roots Tech? I can see what I can answer specific to it. It's, uh, uh, one of the questions is, will we be able to look at sessions before the third to review and line up our watch list? My understanding is they're kind of doing it day of uh, for announcing the classes. Um, the earliest that I could see them doing it would be potentially the day before uh, 11 o'clock or after. Um, there has been rumor of that. I cannot guarantee. So I would say day before, look 11 o'clock or after and see if they have it up. Um, if not, it means that goal didn't happen and it's going to have, it's going to be the morning, the morning of Roots Tech. I remember last year they opened it up early for people in, in the United States uh, because they were starting it based on uh, like the, the time zone in New Zealand or, you know, whatever the furthest East time zone is. Yes, very true. Very true. So that's why I suggest do the 11 before. I've heard rumor on that, but I'm not going to guarantee it may be day of. 
Any other questions about Roots Tech this year? Okay. There was a, another question that came in about the digital library that came oh. in after we finished. Um, and that is, uh, can we suggest a library that has a large family history collection as a possible place to include as a book scanning partner? Yes, in fact, we would welcome that. Let me. What I will do in the, again, I keep talking about this email address that's the, at the very end of the slide presentation. And if you're able to just email directly to that email address, and that would be fantastic. And then we'll connect you with the person who reaches out to the libraries. We have a particular individual who is our partner relations manager. We are happy though to take recommendations on next places to put our cameras. Another question about Roots Tech. Um, will Roots Tech sessions be taped for viewing like on YouTube? Yes, it will be very much how it was last year. A lot of them you could find on YouTube, but then you also could go back and you could look at Roots Tech path, like, like what I'm showing you right now, this is 2021. So it was last year's Roots Tech. You can go back in and you can see the different sessions. The only exception that might exist again this year, there are certain professional genealogists out there that they make their money on presenting. Um, and there's the possibility that those will be kept private and not viewable after Roots Tech. Um, but that would be the only ones that I could see them limiting. And for those, they left it up for at least a week for people to watch. It just didn't stay up for the whole year. Right, a couple more questions. Um, let's see. Uh, someone says, I, I signed up for Roots Tech as soon as it was announced. I received a confirmation, but have not received any additional information. Should I sign up again? It doesn't hurt. Sign up again. You should be receiving some type of email. I, I would have thought you would have at least have received uh, a message about like Steve Rockwood. I am excited about you signing up so that there would have been at least one YouTube link of some sort with a welcome. So do it again, just to be safe. Thank you for taking the time. Okay. Another question about the digital library. Um, just wondering if you could dem demonstrate one more time searching for a particular subject. For example, I was trying to help someone find the story of the death of her grandmother in Tennessee, and I wonder what county histories might be available for Tennessee. Yeah. Okay, let me pull up the slide. Okay, what? Person, the person who shared the question, could you tell me a county name? Is it slower to come through potentially? I can just. Pick so, yeah, I'm not seeing anything in the chat okay. yet, but. Oh, maybe. okay. Do you want, okay. Let me do it on some counties that I'm familiar with, but you can then, um, you can mimic this. So, Missouri, Jackson County. So now this, you can see that it's bringing up atlases. I have some histories of Jackson County that are coming up in this listing. Um, 
I would at this point, you might even want to add in if you knew the particular family name, put that in as well um, as a potential, potential subject as well and see what you would get up or have in your research results. If it doesn't work in the subject, I always suggest you go back and do keyword. And the way that the metadata works and with the cataloging is they try to find as many of the surnames that the book might have in it. And then they will include that in the cataloging under subject. But obviously, if it's on an index or in some sub, some books, there's gonna be a lot of surnames. And so they're not going to be fully listed. So I'd look in keyword and I would check under um, subject, both those locations. Hey, thank you for that. Back to Roots Tech. Will there be any indication which presentations will be pay only so we know to watch them during allotted times? Okay, so usually, yes, it's the people who are the professionals. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. And if you send an, an email to uh, the link at the end, I can find that out for you, though, and I would be happy to do so. Okay, looks like we're ready to move on. Okay. So we just talked a bunch about Roots Tech, and uh, we wanted to share with you, and this is kind of how I ended up getting invited to come do this, is that BYU and Family Search is partnering to do some book scanning during Roots Tech itself. I mentioned that we reach out to libraries, genealogical societies, and we scan their books, but that's not the only group that we scan for. We also do scanning for individual patrons, people like you in the community. We know that you are taking the time to write your own family histories. We know that many of you still have your high school, maybe even middle, maybe even elementary school yearbooks lying around the house, or maybe they're up in your attic, or you have relatives that have those lying around. We would love to borrow those, scan those for you, and return those to you after Roots Tech. These are the types of books that we look for when we are doing scanning. Family histories, biographies, local histories, family Bibles. And when I say family Bibles, we're not going to scan the entire King James Bible. It's really just the pages that have the family history information. So generally, it's going to be the title page because we kind of want to know year time frame that that particular Bible was published. And then we will scan all of the names and and then the significant dates that go along with the names. Yearbooks, and then journals. Journals, we just request that they be older than 70 years, because we really don't want to be creating a bunch of social problems in the world. We already have enough social problems than to post someone's more current diary or journal. So those are the things that we are, are looking for. I know that this is a webinar that it goes out around the country and we have lots of scan sites around country world. I had demonstrated earlier when you go to uh, the, let me show you instead. When you're on the, Family Search Digital Library, where you have the library overview. And I had mentioned that there is this book scanning section, and there's a list of all the different sites. If you happen to live by one of these locations, they also are willing to accept donations for scanning, and then they will return those to you. So you can find a location near you. So during Roots Tech, the way that this is going to look is, let's see. You have three different options. You can either come to BYU and you can bring your book to the Harold B. Lee Library in that family history department area, and you can scan the book yourself, and then you can digitally submit that content. If your particular book is something that 
you self-published or a family member self-published and it's already in digital format, then you can submit digitally. I'll show you what that form looks like. The third way that you would be able to contribute to the, the digital library would be by dropping off your particular books to BYU, that same area, family history area, Carol Beatty Library. And then we are making arrangements for those books to be transferred or transported to a local scan site that is in Payson, Utah. After those books are scanned in Payson, then they will be returned there to BYU and you can come and pick up your book and then after the scanning has taken place. So those are three ways that you can be a contributor during Roots Tech and a contributor to the growth of the Family Search Digital Library. One of the neat things about being a contributor and what we often see is people like to get their books on and then they're able to share it with their relatives around the world. If you make it so that it is public, then every single one of those relatives, if they wanted to download that copy and if they wanted a physical copy themselves, they could then have that printed for themselves or they can keep it digital, but they'd have access to it digitally at any point in time for their own personal research. Any questions about being a contributor during Roots Tech or any time? One of the questions is, um, is the scanning uh, only during March 3rd through 5th? So only during the dates of Roots Tech? So for, if you want to drop things off to BYU, it, it would need to be between that range of time. Uh, there, the other locations, they have our active scan sites. So you would be able to do that at other times. You just make arrangements with that particular institution, contact them and say that you have something that you would like to drop off. If you need to make that, need help in making that initial contact with that scan site, reach out to us and we can help you make that original contact. Okay, another question is, I have a digital book that I wrote. Can I submit that online? If so, where? Yes. Thank you for having an example. And here's where you can do that. Taking you to the beginning again. Let's start from here. Okay. Again, we went to Family Search Digital Library. I'm going to go to the library overview. Inside the library overview, there's a donate tile. Click on donate and then submit digital books. Donate. The end of this PowerPoint, I actually have a link directly to this form so you wouldn't have to do the, that multi step, but that's how you would get to it in the future. It takes you to this digital library donation form. Fill out donor information. If you have any additional comments that you would like to make, type it in. You will need to fill out this permission form. This is our permission to duplicate form. It's saying you are the copyright owner. Any book that is has been published after 1927 and has a copyright, it needs this permission to duplicate form. Anything prior to 1927, it's out of copyright. We don't need permission. If there's anything 1927 or more recent that just never was in copyright, uh, and it's before, generally we go with 1966, if it's before then, we usually can just put it online without getting permission. So the person who said that you have your digital copy, you would then go ahead and complete this form. Let us know what the title, the title of your particular work is. And then you would then click the browse files, find your file for your book, and then you can just upload the file. Yeah, I just, I want to point out here, these, this is the file type that we accept. It's PDF, doc, docx, tiff, formats is what we accept. And thank you for considering donating. Katie, when they fill out the permission to duplicate form, do they also 
upload it by clicking on that browse files um, link yes. as well? Yes, great question, yes. So you would need to save. In fact, I recommend permission to duplicate. The way that this form is set up, it's silly, and you have to download that form first and save it, fill it out, and then when you browse files, you're going to upload your book and you're going to upload that permission to duplicate form, both of those. Great question. Okay, well, any other questions? I'm gonna kind of leave it at that. That's your little brief overview of some of the newness at the Family Search Digital Library. We'll overview of Roots Tech next week and then ways that you can contribute during Roots Tech and, and that you can contribute year round at any point to the digital library. One other thing, if you do contribute during Roots Tech, we did send a bunch of swag, a bunch of free little things down to BYU and to our other scan sites around the country as a thank you to you patrons for taking the time to bring your content in. And we would love to share that with you when you bring your content. All right. There is one other question about Roots Tech. Um, it says, after signing up for Roots Tech and receiving my one-time confirmation, I found that when I sign into my Family Search account, it recognized that I had signed up. So I guess that's not a question so much as a comment. That so. would be helpful for the original person who said that she had signed up and she hasn't been getting any additional information. So if she looked at her Family Search account, I would assume it would behave the same for her that it would show whether or not Family Search is recognizing her as having um, signed up or not. Thank you for that feedback. All right. Oh, well, looks like there's no more questions. Katie, thank you very much. This has been very helpful. I'm excited about these changes to the digital library. Much easier to search than it was before, and I love the new views. Um, also excited for Roots Tech next week and hope everybody uh, will tune into that. And uh, those of you that are local to BYU, uh, if you have books to scan, we'd love to see you next week. Um, if you live um, elsewhere, then uh, uh, those, uh, Katie, can you tell them how they can find the locations of other uh, places that are participating? So when you go to, let me just share and show you. When you go to the, the digital library itself. Let's see, you'll need to share your screen again, I think. Oh, thank you. Okay. There we go. Okay, to see the list, you're going to do that library overview. I'm just taking everyone always back to the, the digital library homepage and then go to book scanning. And then there's a list of different scan sites and that you would be able to contact. Again, if you want help in contacting, just send an email to uh, myself. I'm one of the people who will be responding to and I'm gonna put this up. It's that link that to the, or that email address, right? At the, yes. There we go. Oops. All right. So it's digital library at familysearch.org. And I'm going to kind of just stay on for a minute and I'm going to drop a bunch of these links just into the chat so that if any of you want to bookmark any of them or if you just want to copy and paste and throw them into a doc so that you have access to it later, go for it. I'll include this email as well. Uh, another question, the virtual scanning will always be available, not just during Roots Tech, correct? Like if you already have a virtual item and you want to upload it. Yeah, so anything that's born digital, that is, that form is always around. Yep, it's the exact same way that I just took you to the scan site, you would just go to donation and that form is going to show up under donations, ways to donate. 
We have a comment that someone got an email with more info regarding Roots Tech um, and, uh, after registering a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, you should expect some more information to come by email. All right. Thanks for putting those links in the chat. Um, I'll give everybody an opportunity to copy those. If you want to copy the chat, the easiest thing to do is at the bottom of the chat window, uh, you'll see a little smiley face and next to it, you'll see three little dots. If you click on those three little dots, you can click save chat and it will save the chat um, to uh, a folder in your documents on your computer. So you can try that or you can just copy and paste out of the chat. All right. Well, thank you again so much for that informative presentation, uh, Katie, and thank you all for attending. Um, let's see. Oh, I see. Um, Katie, you'll mm -hmm. need to resend those links. Um, actually, I can do it really quick. They went just to the hosts and panelists. So let me change that to everyone. Oh, I see. And just a moment. There are the links again, uh, plus the uh, email address for all to see. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. Well, that concludes our webinar presentation. Um, again, I'll just leave this open to, for just a moment to give you a chance to copy the chat or the, copy those links. Um, if you um, happen to not catch them in time, there's the email address as well that you can email uh, and get those uh, directly from uh, from Katie. Thank you again. Have a great evening. And so we'll see you next week. A reminder to check our website for uh, the next uh, upcoming webinars schedule. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.